It's a first person shooter, just like the previous ones. Mm -hmm. Um, It's set to take place in the Caribbean. It's got that Cuban vibe to it. And obviously the country is at war with the president. So far from what they're saying, this is going to be the largest playground for Far Cry. Oh, to date then, right? To date. Nice. So it's going to be the largest map with the most things to do. Mm Mm-hmm. They've. I've also read that you know it's a frozen. It's it's a tropical paradise like frozen, right? Time because of the war and stuff. Now it wasn't just like Ubisoft Toronto, right? I'm pretty sure it yes. was. It was uh, the lead for this game. Now I've yes. I've played Far Cry. Like I've said, I, I I started off playing Far Cry Predator demo. That was one of the very first times I've ever tasted Far Cry. Then I went into Far Cry, the original game, Far Cry itself. Then there was the Far Cry 3, Far Cry 4 series. And I think it was Far Cry 5 or 4. I think it was 4 is the first one that I really started playing more and more of. And I was flying around in a little heli. Or maybe it was Far Cry 3. Maybe I'm thinking about it now. Far Cry 3. But it was one of the part of the series. It was really cool. Ubi, I think, has done a really good job on the gaming uh, so far and just from as we saw the trailers from like from the e3 it looks pretty damn good graphic wise i mean graphics look absolutely spectacular it's going to be on all platforms it seems like microsoft playstation 4 5 now are they going to have right now yeah all platforms now i wonder if they're going to do like the x series well i guess they are doing x series as well too so are they going to do the enhanced graphics because of the new processors of the xbox and the playstation i don't know I'm not sure yet, but I know it is, I have read, it will be on PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X. What I used to love about doing was I always, I always did more of the bow and arrow. I always tried to go into the, the missions. The stealthy. Yeah. yeah me yeah. too. I would do the um, stealths. Um, I like being farther away. That way I have time to run if I have to. Exactly. I used to do that because the sole purpose is when you try to sneak in there, you would get more points, you would get more things done, more objectives done. I thought it was pretty darn cool that they introduced more weaponry. And they also do, they did um, the expansion, like in Far Cry, well, uh, what was that, Far Cry? They had that new, uh, they had some DLCs that came out with some of those games that weren't so good from what I had read and seen anyways. But Far Cry 5, though, um, I never really got to play anything further up on the series, but I do remember playing it though. It was super fun and I should probably try to bring it back into my, my variety of games that I have. Maybe I'll get this one. This comes out on uh, October 7th, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. October 7th. I would highly recommend (laughs) playing five to get at, at the very least, at the very least five. But if you have the time before October play five, yeah. And New Dawn. Okay. Because New Dawn is between five and six, apparently. I mean, it came out that way. Yeah, Far Cry 5, I never got a chance. I remember seeing it. I remember walking past the, the shops that sold them, you know, GameStop and stuff. I remember passing those and seeing the big signs and stuff, the advertisements, but I never really got to play it. I never really took the time to do it. Of course, at the time, I didn't have a PC that could handle any of that. Now it's a whole different ballgame. But I think it was 2018 Far Cry 5. So it's just a couple of years, two, three years ago. That just came out. So it wasn't that yeah. far back. It's The storyline for Far Cry 5 is amazing so far. It, mm. it Far Cry 5 has, or not even just 5, but the whole Far Cry franchise has become a very popular oh yeah very popular oh yeah they've definitely sandbox shooter franchise see and, and that's what i love about games like that now you have your first personal shooters your fps's that basically they're they're straight down a tunnel yeah you can vary this way yeah i can vary this way but there's there's always that area where on sandbox kind of games like that even developing you can make your own game as well too which is what i really liked because when I was playing it, I used to design the levels and I would have people come in and we'd play it. I'd work for hours streaming it and doing stuff like that. It was really super fun. And I like those kind of games because it's just, 
I could go this way or I could do this storyline first or I could go over here, get my butt whooped because they're like level, you know, X amount versus what I am. Mm -hmm. But I love that story and I like doing some of the story missions in particular. I like the settings of it. It was a really good man. You're just making my mouth water for these games. Now I just want to get one of these games. I should try it. I should definitely jump into some uh, the Far Cry series and try them again because it's been a while. Oh, yeah. Far Cry. I'm. When it comes to like first person shooters, mm-hmm. Far Cry, the series, is of my top picks. Because I I played okay, I didn't start out on one and two. Mm-hmm. I started out on three, which amazing storyline. And then Primal was a whole nother ball game. It was a that, whole different like just, it was a whole different feel. It took a whole different it, direction. It was still that Far Cry feel, mm. but it was back in caveman times, <laughs> and it was great, right. you know. <laughs> and then <laughs> it it goes from that right. up to now they're doing like the Cuban aspect of it because right. they've got Far Cry Three was an island, and I yeah. So Far they have a Cry. themes of different. Yeah. Like, you have There's, the jungle scenario, you have the uh-huh. forests, and now you have the Cuban fling to it. So I uh-huh. can see, you know, it's really cool how they do that. Do you think what they I, would, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, do you think they would ever bring it to the United States? Or do you think they would ever bring something more closer to home for us in North America? Although I, I will say Cuba is just right down south, but still. I'm, I mean, I don't know, but it'd be something that I personally would look forward to. Right. Because... I mean, all the games that they've made is amazing. The, the and, graphics, yes, definitely. And like this newest one, it hits, it's very political. And I mean, yeah, there's there's some aspects that people aren't going to like mm-hmm. because it's political. Right, but right. it's one of those things that it, they're starting to get storylines that hit a little bit closer to home. Right, right. And, and that's it's good because, you know, well, look at like uh, Battlefields. For, we'll talk about Battlefield 6 here soon, too. But I mean, think yes. about like some of the examples, like Battlefield 1 was World War, what was that, World War 1, World War 2, World War 2 time frame. Somewhere in there. So they we're talking Battlefields, of course, over in Europe and stuff like this. Now, the, you know, you had the Far Cry series, which is the forests and jungles, places we never experienced or never seen before. But the graphics back that you could see the 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 upgrade of graphics as time has progressed like ubisoft is really taking the the financially putting the money back into the their programming their computers to graphically make these games a lot better more handle more graphics uh, you know they can make them 1080 now they i mean i don't know if they'll be in 4k i know because a lot of these the new series Xbox and stuff like that i believe supposedly can do 4k but there's a lot of platforms out there right now like even Twitch or any other streaming line, you know, live streams out there can't really handle 4K. And that's a lot to put out there, too, for 4K, you know, high definition. I think 1080 is fine. 1920, 1080 is fine. But, geez. But that'd be kind of interesting to see how this is going to develop. And I can't wait to see this game. This game looks, the teaser trailer just looks amazing. I I was, like, bouncing in my seat with how amazing mm. the trailer looked. I was grabbed almost immediately Mm -hmm. on how one the graphics Mm -hmm. by far the best graphics i have seen oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah Uh, uh, another thing that really got me and like captivated me is the fact that the antagonist Mm -hmm. is played by giancarlo esposito (laughs) and anyone who has watched breaking bad knows who that is just gonna say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gus Fring from Breaking Bad, which I've watched all of Breaking Bad multiple times, is the main villain in this one. Now that is cool. That is really cool. Now the villains and stuff too. You, I, if I remember right, it's some of the villains from pri- pre Far Cries are introduced in six now. Yes. Okay. So tell me about this. I want to hear this. The with Far Cry 6, the mm-hmm. season pass, and it was 
announced at E3. Okay. The season pass, you're going to be able to take on the role of the villains from Far Cry 3, Far Cry 4, and Far Cry 5. And you're going to get to play through some, from what they're saying, is pretty trippy stuff Ooh. with those three main bad guys. Hmm. And it's the original voice actors, which makes it that much more enjoyable. Because more it's going to be, yeah. It, yeah, it's going to be the voices that you have come to know playing through these games. It's not going to be, you're going to hear Voss and be like, something, something's not right there. Right, no, right. it's actually the voice actors from those three games. And I can understand, you know, some games as they develop, they get, they bring the same characters into the like part two or, you know, the sequel of a game or a game or even a movie itself. But a lot of times the voice actors don't follow suit with them because either conflictions, you know, with, 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 uh, financials, you know, their contracts, or maybe it's just, uh, the studio decides studio heads decide to say, okay, I'm sorry. You know, you were great on part one of this, of this game, but now part two is going to acquire this person to do it versus you again. You know, I think I would feel kind of smashed. Like if I had a, if I did like a far cry series of voice, if I was one of the main actors, even an antagonist or even just a, a an enemy in there. And they said like, we're going to voice act somebody else instead of you. I'd be pretty upset about it. I mean, it depends, you know, it depends on the, if I was like the main character or I was highly influenced during the whole process of it. Um, exactly. This also has voice work with motion, uh, motion capture as well too, which is not new in the industry of gaming, but I think it just adds a whole new chapter to this game in particular uh, with the other Far Cries. But the, the complexity of the game, though, it's just from what I have seen, you know, the trailer of it, just amazing. The graphics and the 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 wit, the wittiness of it. You know, it's kind of exactly. interesting. I uh, another thing I'm excited about, <clears throat> and they they did this for five, is they're implementing. You can choose whether your character is a male or a female. Okay, that that's gonna help bring in more people, people right. who haven't played before, or people who have played and been you know upset that. They had to play only a male character. Right, right. They couldn't choose, you know, hey, I want to be a female character. Right, right. And that's the thing, too. They're they're introducing, you know, the, the roles that people, everybody could follow suit. What if I want to be this character? I mean, like, you think about other games in general, like uh, the recent games that we have out today. You could be a male or female character. So why not, you know, it was introduced in, I think it was, you mentioned it was Far Cry 5, I think it was, or the first time in the series where you could actually be another, a female or male character. Yes. And now they've, again, introduced that into um, this one now, too. So that's good. I'm glad that they are doing that because, you know, a lot of people don't just want to be a, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to be just straight down the path of just one character. I want to have multiple characters, you know. I want to play different characters. Um, it was supposed to release. I think it was supposed to release this beginning of this month, the first quarter of 2021. But because of what happened last year in 2020, that everything got pushed forward and forward and forward. It was supposed to be released. I believe it was February of this year. It was so exciting. The, re the release was because they announced it. Then they announced that it was going to be pushed even further back. Uh, I think it was supposed to be before September. If I read, if I remember, they said mentioned it was supposed to be in September. Then it got pushed again, and now they have a date slated for October seventh of all times, right? October seventh of weird things. That's kind of interesting. Um, I mean, to me, like the more they put into it, because the game has been in development for like five years now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's oh, it's yeah. been five years, so. I'm really hoping that due to the fact that they had to push back release, they can get those little tweaks and get those just the small things that may have needed changed. Like a uh, <clears throat> cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, that one. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. That, poor, poor I'm cyberpunk. sorry. That one was, <laughs> I was so excited for that one. I, I and was, then I got it. Mm. Oh, you got it. 
You bought it. You got it, huh? I did get it. I got it on the release day. <gasps> of all time. Wow. Uh, yeah, it needed a lot of work. See, I've never played the game, but I remember very vividly watching other people live stream it and other people talking about it, how it was the the biggest stink of the year because everybody was so anticipating it being this amazing futuristic i mean if you look at it graphically it looks beautiful how it handled though was a whole nother you know a whole nother creature yeah, of its own. exactly stuttering the you know the the people got stuck you know the stories wouldn't continue on or it would just hard crash it would crash your pc it would just there's some stuff that i saw in cyberpunk that it it just made me laugh like <laughs> There, there's so many things that when it first came out, and I haven't played it in a while now. I don't know how many updates they've done since I did play it. But there were some things like the cars. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oh my god. Cars are not supposed to act like that in games. <laughs> I don't care who it is driving. <laughs> they defy the laws of physics big they time. They <laughs> really do. And it was it was bad. I do recall though, there was there was some like some of the scenes I had seen. Uh they were really good. Like the 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 voicing was really good on some parts of it. There was a lot of lull time. Like uh, you know, like there's a lot of times where people were talking, their mouth wasn't moving, or they were talking and, or not talking, the voice the, the characters are moving their mouths. Uh, the one scene I I had saw that was really, <laughs> really messed up was a scene where you had to drive with this character. Um, you're in a vehicle. If you chose that path, anyways, you would go to this one area and then you would have a choice to, I think it was to, to be a, come like the hitman and kill a person, whoever it was. And, and it was just weird how he was talking and then all of a sudden you got out of the vehicle and he's still talking or the car was driving itself. And it was, it was just acting really weird. It wasn't supposed to be doing what it was doing. It was kind of, you know, even the guy who was streaming, it was like, what is this? Yeah, exactly. There, there was a lot of those WTF moments <laughs> like that. That should not be happening. <laughs> that release is going to be uh, October 7th this year. I'm looking forward to that. It'll be yes, something to I, play that in the is... fall. That is one that I know I'm going to get as soon as it right. comes out. Yeah, that's for Microsoft. When I wonder if that's going to be on Steam or is that just going to be its a separate entity on its own? It might fall on the. I I know for a fact. Obviously, it's going to be on the Ubisoft website. Okay, so you'll that's have for to, sure. You'll have to pull it off Ubi then. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent sure on if it's going to be on Steam because mm -hmm. I know the other Far Cries are on Steam. Right, right. Because right. that's where I've got Far Cry um, 5 and New Dawn at was through Steam. So if they're following with that, then it will probably be on Steam. But there's no guarantees just yet. So what I like about it, too, is it's a single player and multiplayer. So I wonder if that means like you and I could join up or somebody else could join up with their friends and play. Yeah. That would be amazing. That'd be kind of fun, actually. You know, you do some missions together. Like, okay, I'm going to go this way. You're going to do this way. I was going to do this. going to do that. And you got to really love the little animal, too, at the end of that trailer. It's like, wow, oh, you're so cute. That little wiener dog. <laughs> it's so cute. Speaking about the wiener dog, yes. that is one of their... Um, they did the, the guns for hire mm -hmm. in Far Cry 5. The wiener dog is going to be one of those characters that you can get as like a guns for hire. Oh, okay. That will go around and help you out when you need help. Uh -huh. Whether it be a distraction, whether it be, you know, anything you really need help with. <laughs> now it's cute too, because what I had seen, you know, the little cute little doggy. It reminds me of a dog I had when I was growing up. I didn't have a wiener dog, but I had a dog who was a a, um, a chihuahua. So it kind of, you know, had the same characteristics, came, same color scheme anyways. But I think it's going to be super cool to play. I can't wait to try that one. Um, and if it, if it runs smooth as silk, 
you know, it's worth, as you mentioned, if they had to push it, not only because of the COVID scenario, but also too, maybe they just said, okay, let's work on this a little bit more. Let's get this streamlined because we have these hiccups and, you know, developers that say, Hey, look, we're doing testing right now. This is a problem we need to get fixed. Cause it seems like they stomp out fires pretty quickly when it comes mm-hmm. to their games, they update oh, yeah. them, they patch them fairly quickly. Unlike cyberpunk. Um, yeah. U- Ubisoft is very good about getting their, their crap fixed. Yeah. Like, quick. And, and, and that's what's needed. And I'm hoping on release day on launch day, it will be smooth, you know, as smooth as, as, as they can try to get it to be. But of course, as you know, there'll be patches, there'll be some hot fixes, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. It's 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 a brand new game. There it's not gonna be perfect right out the gate. Right. But the more people that play and tell Ubisoft what it is they're experiencing, the quicker they can get it fixed and the better the game will be in the long run. Now see that's the thing too about how today's market of games versus maybe 10 years ago they have the testers now are the consumers they might have testers you know at the at, at their development companies you know the in the departments and stuff like that it could be the the testers of the game and stuff like that basically in more or less is what they do is they they have a bunch of people they they d- d- design a section or multiple sections of a game then they have people say okay i want you to play this game and I want you to see if you can find any flaws in it. If there's any things where you get stuck, if you fall through the map, if there's a hiccup, if this wall is not completely affixed to the other wall, if it's slightly off, we need to know this, what section, so we can do that. So today's market, and they used to pay those people a lot of money too. Those testers get paid pretty damn well. Unfortunately, now it's you and I as the consumers that actually are the ones who are telling the developers, hey, look, this right here is broke. We need to get this fixed. Or this part right here, this this car is floating two feet off the ground. This needs to be back out of the main ground unless it's back to the future. But it's like, you know, things like that. Now we are the testers, which, I mean, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but I feel kind of like I shouldn't have to tell you what's wrong with your game. I should just be able to play your game smoothly and enjoy the game without worrying about these hiccups or at least, you know, I mean, I don't report some of the things I should probably report them, you know, like some of the things that hiccups and stuff. And when I'm live streaming, I'll say, hey, you know, devs, you need to fix this or you need to do that. Exactly. But I don't feel it's in 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 my world. I don't feel I should be the one who has to tell the marketing, tell the world, hey, like this is, you know, your problem. And I'm going to message you. I see a lot of people on Steam doing that, too. But who am i to say you know it's it's just not for me but we'll see what happens you know i mean i i i agree with that i when i when i want to play a game i just want to jump in it and play it right right exactly but then again if it wasn't for beta testers how would they know what to fix see that's the flip side of the coin it's the plus and the minus it's the yin and yang if you will us exactly. as consumers, we we see we see things that like say if you are a developer of a game, there are things that you won't see that you know when you push ahead and you say, Okay, here's my game, let's market this game, let's go with it. There are things that you won't see, or you kind of like get blindsided, you, you overlook or you didn't see it at the time. And then people like our fresh eyes who haven't never seen this, because you could be working on this game for years, as you mentioned, five years plus to work on mm-hmm. this game, then development. Imagine sitting there every day, okay, let's go through this sequel again. You know, going through this and stuff, it can get very repetitive and you overlook things like, oh, there's a scratch right here. You know, you don't see it. But if you got fresh eyes onto this game or developing of this, you know, the sky or whatever it is, it makes sense then because like this person can email you or message you on a message board in Discord or whatever it is and say, hey, look, this is something you need to fix. So I can see the plus about it too. So don't get me wrong. There's a plus and a minus to everything and every scenario across, you know, the human world, if you will. But I, I don't know. I, I, I feel that it, once the people who start catching little flaws like this, if they can hot patch them, fix them up quickly, hey, it's going to be a hell of a good game. It's going to be a really good game. 
I really, oh, yeah. I love the I'm, Far Cry series. I'm super excited for it. I, I honestly, it's one of the biggest games this year that I'm looking forward to. Have you ever played any Zeldas? Yes, I love the Legend of Zelda games. I don't remember what the first one I played was, oh, yeah. but I remember it was. One God, those, it was years ago. It was one of those moments. I mean, one of those moments, though. I remember mine very first one was the original Le- Legend of Zelda. I remember first hearing it. I was at my cousin's house. I was, I don't know. I was, I, I, I remember seeing it. I think we were like, I don't know how old I was. I was in my teens or early. And I, all of a sudden I, 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 he was, his friends were downstairs. I went up, I I went to get a drink. We just got there. And all of a sudden I hear a ding, 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 that, that amazing theme. And immediately like Toucan Sam, I just started floating like this. I'm like, what is that? As being a musician, I'm like, what is that song? It's so pretty. I went down there and sure as heck I was hooked. I loved Legend of Zelda. Oh yeah. It was one of the first ever kind of an RPG where it had battery backup. It had a battery safe built into the cartridge itself. Like the adventures, it just had, it had a little pill battery that was unheard of to this day. A lot of these games now, you know, we have the cloud where if you, you know, you and I are playing a game or if you're, your friends are playing a game. It's all saved on a cloud. You know, the, mm-hmm. the eye cloud, if you will, it's an imaginary somewhere up in space, this cloud where everything is saved and we don't have to worry about putting in numbers. Cause I remember you would have to put in some numbers like a sequence and it was like 16 digits long for a password. Like if you go back to old school yeah. Nintendo and stuff like Contra and all that stuff, like if you, you beat a level or even Mike Tyson's punch out, it would give you a code that you had to manually write down. If you didn't, you're, you, if you, you hit, didn't, you didn't have a save, you didn't have a save. And Zelda was just amazing. And the, and the music though was really good. The music is my favorite part of the Zelda series. Yeah. yeah. By far that. And like, I don't want to say the graphics because the graphics have come a long way, but like the different scenes and stuff, like I don't remember which game it was, but Link was by a tree Mm -hmm. and there was a mission there and it, it it was beautiful. Yeah. The legend is Zelda. Like I, I, I'm trying to remember, like there's so many Zelda games. Right. And I'm trying to remember which game it was. There was Ocarina of Time. There's Majora's Mask. I want to say it was Ocarina of Time. Yeah. Where you played the music. That game was that game was beautiful. Oh, it was. It was absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. The graphics for its time. Mm -hmm. Amazing. The music and and in those games, even though they're like eight bit or even sixteen bit, well, sixteen bit came later. Eight bit music was just incredible. And now we have the Legend of Zelda: The Breath of the Wild sequel coming out next year. Now this is going to be interesting too. To say I saw just a little bit of a teaser of it. It looks pretty darn good too. It's kind of following the same as um, the one I just fairly just came out. The the uh, Legend of Zelda. Um, what was that one? Was it the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild? And uh, the first one of it. And it was just amazing. I never got to play it, though. It was more of an open world, more of a, instead of a 2D, it's more of a mm-hmm. 3D version of the game. Exactly, yeah. You know, I never got to play that one, but it looked really good. See, I've read that this the sequel mm-hmm. is going to, like, it's going to utilize some of the original story, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it's also going to have new story and gameplay elements. And some of those have actually been inspired by Red Dead Redemption 2, Ooh. which is crazy, but that's amazing. Now, that's kind of interesting how they would have a, a scenario like that, where you have a Wild West and put into this one. 
It's like Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. That game too was, it was good. It was for Nintendo 64, if I'm not mistaken, N64, 3D graphics and stuff like that. It was the second one to use 3D graphics. It was, it was interesting. The Ocarina of Time though, like you mentioned, uh, it's just, uh, oof. the original Legend of Zelda and then the Ocarina of Time, I think were the two. Then you get the Link of the Past, which was okay. It was kind of like twisting. It was kind of, so they were, you could see the development of it. You could see oh, the development yeah, of the series. Sure. Yeah, you know, but this sequel though, to, from what little bit we know of, because they didn't really give us too much. It, it looks to be impressive as well, too. I love the Zeldas, and I hope, hope down the line that it, you know, because Nintendo has licensing, and it's only exclusive for the Nintendo, but mm-hmm. you'll never get I'm, rid of that license, you know? <laughs> and I guarantee you, when, it, when Breath of the Wild 2 comes out, I will get my Switch Lite back from my child, and I will play it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I would be interesting to see it if you do uh, do decide to get into it and stuff like that. Uh, I was supposed to be, I think it was uh, referred to as the Breath of the Wild 2. I don't know if they're labeling it as Breath of the Wild sequel or just the Breath of the Wild 2, but... That they'll probably announce that later when yeah. it's closer to dropping. I wonder when that is... I know it's supposed to be in 2022. Is it first quarter? Is it second quarter? I don't know. They haven't. I don't think they really mentioned it. It's kind of a shh right now. Yeah, it's kind of just hey, here you go, <laughs> teaser. Hey, listen. You know? Exactly. I wonder if they're gonna have that little fairy again because the fairies were super cute. The fairy, you had the fairy, um, the cave and stuff like that. The music uh-huh. with a harp. Oh, it just drew me in. I love that stuff. But speaking of different games that kind of draw you in. What about the Five Nights at Freddy's? Okay, well, that is a whole damn franchise. <laughs> that is a whole franchise. That yes, it is. A lot of people are really into. And me personally, I've never played them, but I've watched a lot of gameplay on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I actually was thinking about giving it a try. I would get a world because it is on PC platform. I would definitely do it. I know. I don't know much of it. I do know it's pretty creepy. I know there's a lot of VR too. There's a virtual reality. I know, <clears throat> I know it's a horror based game, which that's my favorite genre of game is right. horror based. Right. I mean, as soon as Faz come out, I was on Faz. That's where I make you. Mm-hmm. As soon as Lunch Lady come out. We jumped into it. We had to. We had to jump right into we, it. We have gone from horror game to horror game. <laughs> and Five Nights at Freddy's is something that I, I'm i actually looking forward to finding out more about. I'm looking forward to, you know, the fact that it's one of those games where obviously you go through five nights right each night is going to be different and it it takes patience Mm -hmm. and smart thinking so you gotta logically think of your steps of what you're going to do yeah you you, yes you have to think with this game you know probably one of the reasons why i haven't personally played it yet is because my love for like Chuck E. Cheese and stuff when I was a kid. Because I kind of hold those because those are sacred memories for me. But when you're talking about animatronic creatures or characters that become alive and they're homicidal and they want to kill you, that kind of just like, like, holy crap, dude, what's going on? You know, it makes yeah, you think what's going on in their head. <clears throat> it definitely makes you think like could this actually be something that happens and i mean there's it's been around since 2014 2015 2014 i think it was it was the the first release of one of these games came out and from what like you had mentioned some of the things that they they have spread it so wide to different things there's the vr version of it you know the first 
it's to me it's one of the first of the kind where you actually have these animatronic characters and so it's like i just couldn't i couldn't imagine you know doing it in vr i have a friend specifically who plays it in vr or who has started playing it in vr i'm sorry <laughs> but that sounds terrifying first <laughs> second yeah. um that sounds really scary <laughs> right right i i know there's there's a lot of jump scares Five Nights at Freddy's. I've, I've seen that. If you're off your game just a little bit, you could get a jump scare. There's 10 different games. I think there is. There's like, there's a virtual reality. There's augmented reality. There's all these different, it's, it's like a whole day, And it takes like a pizzeria. I mean. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, practically Chuck E. Cheese. It's basically like a Chuck E. Cheese from hell is what it is. But haunted. <laughs> But see, I think because like he, the developer took inspiration from Chuck E. Cheese. It had to. They had to. Had to. Had and to. It, I'm sorry. I've never. When I was younger, I was never afraid of the Chuck E. Cheese mouse. But now that it's not an actual person in the suit, <laughs> it's kind of creepy. Well, kind of scares me. I don't know if you remember. <clears throat> um, when there would be shows at Chuck E. Cheese where the curtains were closed, then all oh, of a yeah. sudden it would open up, and here you are eating this, you know, expensive cardboard thin, pizza, <laughs> this thin cheese pizza. No offense, Chuck E. Cheese, we love you. Don't get me wrong. The pizza was good. The pizza it was, was good. cardboard thin. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was it predates you know uh, thin crusts. Maybe yes. it was early days of thin crust. But then the That's curtains, the original thin crust there. <laughs> right. The, the curtains would open up and then all of a sudden you would just see them just start to get alive, you know. Now, it was kind of creepy because I do remember going there with, with family and stuff on birthdays or just if I was good for the week, if I had good grades and stuff, I'd go. we would go there for a weekend or for a day for a few hours and enjoy it. You know, have pizza and play video games with those tokens. And I think I still have probably a couple of those tokens, to be honest with you. But... I would sit there and, and I would get near the stage as close as I could and I would watch them. And it looked like Chucky would like turn his head and look at me and he's like, I'm like, oh my God, it freaked me the hell out a few times. But then I realized, okay, he's not going to jump off the stage and kill me. But introducing Five Nights at Freddy's. Now there is a sequel coming out this year as well too. The Security Breach. Yes, they're making a new one. And I... <laughs> I don't know. Like, I haven't seen much on the security breach. Yeah, I haven't seen a video for you. I haven't seen a trailer for it. But um, they're teasing the 10th right. installment right now. <clears throat> um, they're supposed to be a 80s style version of Freddy and Chica. Okay. Yep. There's also mm-hmm. supposed to be four completely new animatronics. Oh lord! <laughs> which great. <laughs> We're gonna get more. <laughs> um, as of the 21st of April, the characters' names were leaked. And oh, they had a leak on the on, on the characters' names. Yes. Okay. Um, there's gonna be an. Let me where. Okay, we got Freddy and Chica, which are from the originals. Mm-hmm. And then we've got a teaser for a glam rock Freddy because they're doing 80, 80s versions. And that, and that fits perfectly for the time frame, mm-hmm. I believe, when Chuck E. Cheese and stuff developed. Yep. And there was 90s? a teaser <laughs> featuring a character named Vanny. Vanny. Now, I'm not sure who Vanny is. Mm-hmm. But they teased that. And they teased in March of 2020 a brand new alligator character. An and alligator he, character? He is going to be called Montgomery Gator. Montgomery Gator. Now, that's which interesting. That's great. Wow. Now, I wonder if they're going to have some Easter eggs in this one. Do you think they're going to hide some Easter eggs in this? I mean, it's possible. I mean, any good game like this, you got to have exactly I mean, if you could have Mickey's everywhere in Disney. OK, why not have some teasers or some Easter eggs? Maybe there'll be like some um, 
in homage to past games, the nine games prior to it. Maybe they'll do like a first one, you know, like the, you'll see a, a framed picture if you go in this one section or if it's hidden behind the closet or whatever it is or inside the security place. There's a character picture or something that we could be like, oh, that's an Easter egg. You guys did that. Exactly. See, because if I was a game developer, that's what I would friggin' do. I would seriously do that. I would hide music notes or something. I would do something that I could relate to and then sit there and see if you, as the consumer, can actually see it or find it. That would be something I would be interested in doing. You know, and if you're the owner of the like a pizzeria, like I mean, it's, this is so just like this is so such a a good game series too of of, of a series of games that I have never played, and I should introduce these into my my library. Yeah, I really think that'd be really cool. From <laughs> from what I'm seeing, it's gonna be its initial release is gonna be on PlayStation Four and Five and PCs. Right. And then come to the other platforms about three months after release. Well, they have the anthology series. I mean, this they just have so much of it. They had a spin out there. They were supposed to even have a, a movie. Wasn't there supposed to be a movie or there was a movie that was supposed to be coming out as well, too, from what I remember? There's, I believe there was. Can you imagine that, a movie of this stuff? Not only can you play the game of it, but now here you are actually physically watching this on the big screen. <laughs> like, holy stuff, man. Exactly. Like, yep. I know, like, there's Five Nights at Freddy's is huge. It's a huge market. It's huge it's franchise. Huge. I know people who have bought Five Nights at Freddy's merchandise before. I even knew what the hell Five Nights at Freddy's was. <laughs> I was seeing all this Freddy Fazbear stuff, and I was right. like, where is that coming from? What right, is it? Right, right. Yeah, and I mean, like, even even now, like they've got so many YouTube videos that have Five Nights at Freddy's. Like they have a Minecraft video, and it's Five Nights at Freddy's. That's unreal, isn't it? That's crazy. That's crazy, and it's just it's blown up, and it's great. It's crazy. I, I, I'm willing to give it a try because I've been told, you know, you need to play this. Yeah. I mean, I, do you go back and actually find the originals and try to see if you could play those as either plat on the platforms or are they going to be, be able to play them all on a PC? There's, there's one through four series. There was the uh, sister, sister location or something like that. There was a simulator. I mean, there was all these different things. <clears throat> That were, I mean, it, it's such a big series of Friday nights, five nights at Freddy's security breach. I mean, that's coming out not too far from now, right? 2021. That's this year. Yeah, this year. And, and that's what know. they have. It. Huh. That's crazy. The There's game a was initially scheduled to release in the beginning of this year. Okay. But obviously with COVID and everything, it got pushed back, so it's been delayed for the end of this year. Okay. So I'll, we'll just have to keep an eye out for absolutely updates on when that is going to come out. Now, think about like all the things that you know that are coming out because of what happened twenty twenty. Everything got kind of furtherly pushed down, so you have a lot of stuff that's coming out in the fall. You know, you have like. Because to, to me personally, the fall, I don't really travel out too much because we get snow here where I'm at and we get stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I don't travel much in the wintertime. So it's a good game to actually, and especially if it's towards October. I mean, think about that. The Halloween know. season. It, is yeah. Perfect you, for the spoopy games. You, is, you, yeah, you that's, definitely. That's what I look forward to come Halloween time. Yes, absolutely. When I first started playing Faz was around Halloween time. It, it, yes, it was. When it released. Yep. And I fell in love with that game. I was terrified at first, but I've become so accustomed to it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that it's not that bad anymore. It, it reminds me of two Five Nights at Freddy's. There was that Chuck E. Cheese and then you had Showbiz Pizza. I just thought of it. 
Showbiz yes. was kind of like the competitor. Like if you were to say Domino's is comp- competition of Pizza Hut, you know, yes, they were kind of like competing. They had the animatronics and stuff like this, which is, is something you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't think of, but man, kudos to the guy, you know, for doing this, this fry five nights at Freddy's. I would love to see it. I would love, I, I wish I could say, okay. Uh, I don't know if the game is originally for platformed. Uh, was it for, you know, earlier game i don't know if it was on microsoft windows i don't know if it was on the pc to begin with back in 2014 i could be wrong could have been back for the nintendo or for the xbox etc i'll have to do more research and see how this is you know and see yes, what they we have definitely have to keep up with that one for sure i mean that one seems like it's going to be fun if it's got mini games you got the jumps obviously it's got jump scares i mean obviously think it's about just... this doing this in vr like i keep i keep pushing right back to vr but holy hell man that would be that would i'd probably pay myself i'm not even gonna lie that with the jump scares that i've seen in other people's youtube videos or streams right vr i don't think i would be able to handle it i think i would either have a heart attack or i'd pay myself right one way or the other i'm i know i'm gonna be scared right yeah definitely would be scared definitely be a scary thought too um, to see this game as it develops even further. I mean, I wonder how many more they're going to have. They have anthologies. They have a, tr- they just have so many different things for this game. There's spinoffs. The the music though, for, well, for me personally as a musician, just kind of sells it too. It's really good. I think so anyway. So that's just my, my two cents on that one. Uh, speaking of different things and different things, what about back for blood? That was also too on the E3. So think about that one. Uh, okay. Back for Blood. I know this is like right up your alley. Oh, yes. This is when so- I first started streaming, I did a co-stream. One of the first co-streams I ever did was with my buddy. Mm-hmm. And we played Left for Dead, both one and two. And I've I've got clips on my Twitch mm-hmm. from those those games. I'm so excited because when I first saw the trailer for Back for Blood, I thought it was another Left 4 Dead. Mm. It is being made by the people who were originally supposed to make Left 4 Dead. Oh, really? Yes. It is. It's. I'm so ready to like. If I could show the trailer, I would, but I don't. It's turtle- I'm not showing a trailer right now. Turtle Rock Studios, you know? Yes. They they were supposed to make the Left 4 Dead series. Mm. And Valve ended up making Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. This is supposed to... Back 4 Blood is supposed to be like Left 4 Dead. That's why a lot of people were getting confused. And they're like, is this another Left 4 Dead? Why isn't it being made by Valve? Right. If it's another Left 4 Dead. That's pretty a good, much good question. It's a four player co-op. So that's right off the bat. That's great. You can play with your friends. Two, it's a zombie game. There's going to be action from start to finish. So if that's your kind of game and that's the kind of games you get into, this will be perfect for you. See that I've never been into the zombies kind of genre, but I guess because of some of the COD games and stuff, they introduced those kind of zombie things. Cause when I, when I would stream or when I would play those kind of games, people always said, Hey, why don't you do the, the zombies or do this? And I'm like, I'm not really into that, but I could see though on the reverse side of the coin, I can actually see like some of the back for blood. I could see some of the zombie stuff like left for dead. I played those, you know, which are kind of wow, those are creepy as hell to begin with. But you know, it was kind of neat. It was kind of neat how they did that first person sh- survivor shooter. Yeah, you, know, you go boom, boom, boom. You know, you, you shoot things, boom, boom, boom. But <laughs> a big difference between Back for Blood mm-hmm. and Left for Dead is mm-hmm. Back for Blood is going to have cards. cards. So at the at the start of each level, you get to build like a deck of cards with various. It'll change various different things about the gameplay mm. like you can use cards to 
adjust your health, your damage, your stamina, and the AIs can uh, use corruption cards. Is corruption what they're calling. Corruption cards. It can uh, spawn extra enemies. Mm -hmm. It can activate effects like fog or rain. Make the horde larger. So those are all completely different elements. Yeah, I was going to say that's completely twisted. Than yeah. Left 4 Dead. But that is going to add such a great level of excitement to the game. So it's definitely going to give it a twist. Oh, yeah. Versus... You know, I, I didn't play much for the Leopard Dead series, you know, but it was kind of interesting, you know, to see how this is going to develop because it was the, uh, the, the, uh, what was it, Valve that split off from Turtle Rock Studios. So the original, like you mentioned, the developers, you know, they, they said, okay, well, we own the rights to this franchise. We're going to move on and we're going to say, okay, we're going to make our own independent studio for it. But I thought, that's, that's cool. Okay. I could see that. I could definitely yeah. see that. You know, I, it's, it's, of course, what is it running? It's Unreal Engine. I mean, come on, think about that. Unreal Engine is just sick. All the games that the Unreal Engines, you know, they run is just, oh, it's crazy. And see, like, <clears throat> this one, it's not like, it's going to be like a worldwide outbreak, mm -hmm. but it's caused by a parasite, which is very heavily implied that it's an alien origin parasite that's interesting so it's going to be basically something from up there exactly uh, okay okay it's gonna be an alien alienation if you will that's cool mm -hmm. now is it going to be just a uh it's a first person shooter survival horror is there going to be yes. a story? I wonder if there's going to be storyline to this is it going to be obviously it's interactive if it's a first person and it is multiplayer, so obviously there's got to be something. I, I'm pretty sure there is going to be a story mm -hmm. behind this. Okay. Um, That's going to be interesting. I know that they've already said that, the, that most of the humanity has been infected and turned into what they're calling ridden rather than, you know, zombies. The Ridden. <laughs> yes. Okay. And it's going to be a, obviously a post-apocalyptic world if it's during like <clears throat> zombies and stuff. And you're going to have eight characters. So different, eight different from. to choose and, and like say yes. if I chose this one you could choose this one etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes. And the um, characters you choose from they're being called the cleaners so they're cleaning up the ridden and their names that they've come out with so far is walker holly hoffman evangelo carly doc jim and mom okay if you go back and listen to those that list of names it sounds like one tv show well, another TV show name, like main characters of TV shows, Carly, that one, Hoffman, I mean, the Hoff, come on. Yeah. What was the first one to <laughs> Walker. Walker, uh, what is that? The, Texas uh, Ranger. Texas Ranger, Chuck Norris, right. <laughs> there you go. I mean, look, if I'm a developer, these gays are like, okay, we need character names up front right now on my office desk by Monday. It's like, holy shit, it's Friday. Exactly. I got to know this stuff. And all of a sudden, here you go. I'm going to flip through the dial. Oh, Texas Ranger. It's, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like, you know, that, exactly. to, to me, it's like, you know, the, the half, you know, the half. Okay. <clears throat> maybe, maybe not, but you know. That's really and fun. in this game, it was initially supposed to be released tomorrow. Tomorrow of all times, right? It was. Wow. But again, oh, game got course. delayed. Oh, okay. And it's coming out October 12th. Wow. So that's like now. five days apart from Far Cry. So now we're talking yeah. we this game. We have this game. I mean, there's, there's a lot of new games coming out in October, it seems like. October is oh, there. yes. The big one, it seems like. There is supposed to be an open beta set for mid-2021. Right. But it doesn't have an exact 
day <clears throat> when it's supposed to open that up. Mm. It will be available for Windows, PlayStation 4 and 5, and the Xbox One, Series X, and Series S. Yeah, the Series so X. It's, it's yeah. going to be all platforms right now, mm. except mm. for Nintendo Switch. Surprising. Very surprising. But again, different licensing and stuff like that. I, I look forward to seeing it. I hope that one turns out really well. Uh, five minutes left on this segment. Uh, one I want to touch base that I really looking forward to is Final Fantasy 16. Now, I have an affinity love of RPGs. If you've watched my show in the past, if you watch my channel, you have noticed I have played some great RPGs like Pine and you know all these different games. That, uh, my time in uh, my time at Porsche is kind of a RPG ish. But there's really some really fun games like that. But Final Fantasy series always had a true heart string, you know, pulled my heart strings because of the music, the quality of the Chocobos. I still have the, I still have barely played it. The Final Fantasy 15, I barely have played the game. I still have it. Uh, I need to get back into it. It's super fun. MMORPG. The world is huge. Uh, it's, it's going to be crazy. You know, the, the, the dual roles and producer, um, what's this? Hiroshi. Oh, he's going to kick a uh, ta Taki. That's it. Taki. Uh, amazing director on this. It's going to be amazing game. I love these kind of, if you've seen the gameplay of it, or if you've seen a pre-release of it, the graphics are sick. Have you ever played final fantasy? Have you ever, I don't know if that's something you'd like or not, but. Okay, when it comes to Final Fantasy, I've never played them myself, but mm -hmm. I do remember when I was growing up, I used to watch my brothers play Final Fantasy a lot. And the only reason I never played is because they never let me okay. as a kid. I remember, like, watching them play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now that I'm older, I'd like to, you know, jump in. But the thing is, right now, I believe the only platform it's on is PlayStation. Right. Yeah. They're licensed exclusive just through the play. See, that's the thing. Just it's the just, Sony. Yeah. Just the Sony, just as Nintendo has the series of, of Mario's and you know, all mm -hmm. that fun stuff. <sighs> but it's a really good game. The RPGs have, they, they developed it where it started to going more futuristic. The old school version, the turn and plays where you would take turns playing, you know, uh, back and forth between you would choose this if you wanted to choose a spell then it would turn based kind of an rpg i love turn based mm -hmm. and it was just always such an amazing game the feel of it the music the you the grind was real back then now it's like mm -hmm. they kind of develop it where it's more futuristic for today's generation where it has to be more cooler and it has to be yeah you know more color more vehicles and more introduction of things that are in current tread trends, you know, like, like headphones and glasses and all this stuff. And, and the looks, the character looks, the more thinner, more masculine, just the, the characters have really developed. Cause back when you played this old school, it was, it was great, but they were just a wizard. You had the dark elf or the white elf, the, or dark wizard, white wizard, the, the mage, if you will, like a, a person who would heal you. And then you had the main character, you know, as the, the big, the leader of the pack. And it was great. I loved it. I love this game. I hope it comes out soon again. It's supposed to be sometime. I, I'm thinking it's 2021, but I don't know. It, hopefully soon though, because I would love to personally get this game. If it was on the PC, I would definitely get it. But unfortunately I can't, but exactly. Like from what I'm seeing their release date has yet to be announced, right? right. But they're planning on releasing some more information sometime this year. Right, right. So, and Final Fantasies, they're big games. Oh, yeah, big that. games. Definitely they're big games. They're huge games. games. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they take time to work on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So, that's just one of those things that it's going to be a play by ear. We're just going to have to wait until they update us. And let us know, hey, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. And this is when y'all be able to play it. <laughs> I can't wait for that one. 
All right, let's take a break and uh, we'll come back here shortly and uh, we'll go on to these uh, second segment here. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, ma'am. Hey, it's something about speaking of running, some of the things I wanted to talk about. And, and, and some people may or may not see eye to eye with, but. I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah. <laughs> the AI trend. Okay. Here we go with robotics and stuff. Now I could see again, just as I always see, I look at things biasly. I look at things like, okay, what can this do for you? that it can't nothing can do at the moment to help you or is there it's just like with anything it's just like with a pencil well they've you know they copyrighted it and then they've redid it and redid it to the point where a pencil looks like today but as an example an autonomous vehicle what is your opinion or what is your thought about an autonomous vehicle okay well, when it comes to the vehicles mm-hmm. i I'm not sure how I feel about them. I know, you know, eventually we will get there where they're fully automated. Right. But as of right now, I mean, I've, I've seen so many things on the news and so many like clips and stuff on YouTube Mm -hmm. where those self-driving vehicles, they crash. Right. Right. And you still, like, yes, it is a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yes, you should always pay attention in a vehicle. Exactly. No matter if it's an automatic driving vehicle or if you're a passenger or you're the driver. Because you could see something that the driver missed. Right. Or you can correct the mistakes that the automated driving vehicle makes. Cause I've seen a lot of articles where people were texting with autom- the automated driving cars and they weren't paying attention mm-hmm. and they got into an accident or they fell asleep Ooh. because, you know, you know, they're automatically driving cars or, that's what they're designed to do. They're designed to drive, but you still have to pay attention. You still, you, you do absolutely. You still need to be awake. The one thing that's truly scary about that to me is I don't like, and and you touch, you hit the mark right on, on the point, right on the mark. You don't have control when it comes to an autonomous vehicle. The vehicle is driving itself. You have no real control. If you can override those controls, like say if it starts zooming off, you know, if it starts to fall asleep or if it becomes hacked or whatever the case it is, do I have technology to where I can manually override it and take control myself with it? The thing about that is it's a very scary thing. But then you think about what they would have to do to fully automate or fully get all these vehicles out there that are autonomous, that drive by themselves. Mm -hmm. Is the vehicle going to be able to read the road? Does it does it have to scan the road? Just like you know how when you in today's newer cars where you you back up, it automatically shows a camera on your dash. That way, it shows you that there if there's any people behind you or another vehicle, it'll make the beep 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 noise. So, are they going like, to have to like my vehicle when yeah. I back up? Mm-hmm. It's got the the camera exactly, You're and just... even if like I'm not moving and I put it in reverse and a car Mm -hmm. goes by it makes sure it lets me know and beeps really loud. See, and now that's the thing now reverse it instead of putting it on the back end of the vehicle, are they going to put it also on the front end of the vehicle? So that way, when you're driving down the road, say you're on I 80, you know, you're an Ohio turnpike and Mm -hmm. you're driving, you're going West because that goes all the way out towards like uh, for, it goes out forever. And it goes out almost probably to Washington state. So if you're Mm -hmm. running this major artery, you are in your lane, okay? Now, does this robot or autonomous vehicle have to read the width of the individual lane that you're in to calculate to keep it straight? Because I think this would have to do it, right? It would have to calculate if it's driving straight. It would have to figure out this lane is, you know, 
eight feet wide versus this and this, you know, from the, the dotted lines to the shoulder is eight feet. So I must mm-hmm. stay within that six foot cushion to have a foot this way, a foot this way to equate to eight feet. So that way it stays down the center of that main lane. Now, what yeah. happens though, the scary part is, is when you're on the freeway, if you ever notice when you're in construction, it says the road narrows or it gets smaller because you have to merge into it as weird construction zone lane mm-hmm. that they manipulate. So now are, is the computer that's autonomous now going to have to be able to read those new changing lanes that way it can, you know, compensate and, and, and make, you know, go by itself into that lane or is it going to drive you straight into that wall because it's still assuming that width of that road is eight feet or it's, it's confused and it says error, error, 404, can't figure out why this lane is shrinking and all of a sudden, it, you know, it's a scary thought. So are they going to develop a thing now where they put in the concrete like these, you know, or is it going to be like a satellite fed thing where it's going to be every 10th of a mile, there's like a little laser that, you know, the, the, the computer and the vehicle reads as it goes by it and says, okay, stay straight for X amount of time or whatever the case it is. So there's all these arguments of like what it can do. Are they going to spend trillions of, do we have to re surface all the freeways and stuff just to make these autonomous vehicles i mean it's scary it's a scary thought if you really think about it i like to have control of things you know especially when it comes to driving (laughs) because if you're doing i mean when you're driving you the only thing you can control is yourself in your car right right you can't control other vehicles right but you have to drive for them (laughs) exactly like say I don't know. You and Joe Schmo are in both driving in automatic driving cars. Right. What if Joe Schmo needs to get to, say, an exit Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the opposite side of you? I know there's a lot of technology with the cars and stuff that give you that that the sensors and stuff because i know my right. vehicle has a lot of sensors right but you have to think what happens if a sensor goes out what happens if you aren't paying attention or you can't control the car and joe Schmo's car comes out in front of you and your car doesn't pick up on it right away right there's that delay. What if there's an update during, what if there's an update in the computer's brain as you're driving while you're driving? Yeah, exactly. Or what if like the snow conditions, like what if it's snowing? Oh God, outside? I would hate to think about oh. automated cars in snow. Trust, oh, no, trust no. me when you're in a snow belt area like myself, it's a scary, it's scary to drive. Number one, when you're physically driving a vehicle with mm-hmm. your hands on the wheel I could not imagine how scary it would a be computer doing it. a computer, a car doing it on its own. That would scare the bejesus. I mean, they would, I'm sorry. I, I would absolutely have to move into an environment where it is more sun, more sun, less snow because exactly. I, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle it. And you made a good point too. So here's a thought too, as you mentioned about going Joe Schmo going off the exit, do you have to pre-calculate? Say, for example, I'm going to going to the mall. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do I have to, when I step foot into the vehicle, do I have to either verbally command it to tell it, you know, like where to cactus, you know, whatever it says and say, uh, drive me to Joe Schmo's mall, please. Or, you yeah. know, is it calculating? Is it calculating now? Is it like, you know, how it is on your road trips and Google maps and like stuff? GPS and stuff. Right. Does it now do it for me? So where I can only just, I, I type in the location where I'm going and then automatically it, it uploads a distinctive route and then it follows that. But I mean, is that the only way for autonomous vehicles to work too? I mean, they can't drive it. Like what if I want to take a back road or what if I want to say the freeway is closed up ahead, but the, the thing still sits there and says, well, we still have to go through this, but I can't because the road's closed. What do you do? What happens? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So then there's some things still that people, you know, I, I have family members who are huge 
that want this to happen. They're like, they're so excited. Uh, it, they're not lazy drivers. They're not the best drivers, but they're not the <laughs> laziest drivers. I mean, they drive, they drive like hell, but you know, they drive <laughs> and, but they are just looking for that day when this stuff comes to reality. And, and it's scary for me because I love, I love to sit back, listen to the radio. Uh-huh. I love going for a nice drive. I do. I used to people today are a lot scarier. I saw a lady yesterday texting and she's driving right next yeah. to me. I'm doing 45 miles an hour. She's next to me. I mean, you're doing like 63, 64 feet a second, uh-huh. you know, five seconds or less. You're clearing a football field in that time frame. It's you're, it's impossible to stop. You're going to minimize, you know, minimum like 100, 115 feet of slamming your brakes and sliding. So it's like, eh, exactly scary. You know, another point too, with AI uh, would be, like at a fast food place Mm -hmm. here's a flip of the coin too a lot of people need to work in life so if you put a ai or a robot in place of a human which is a lot of places are starting to do i could see about you know car manufacturers and 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 stuff like that when you're manufacturing vehicles like if you if a rob a, a human being can't just pull out something from a furnace that's like scalding hot metal you know, exactly. like like a car door and just plant it down. They can't do that. But a robot can just pick it up and no problem and set it down. But what if you were in in a scenario where Joe Schmo's chicken it says, okay, I'm going to fire all these employees. I'm going to put in place robots because you don't have to pay them minimum wage or you don't have to pay them a set wage either. So that's a loss of jobs, which I could see is a bad thing. But if we overcome that hump, think about this. You have this robot who is manually grabbing items. Say if you said, you know, you're welcome to Joe Schmo's chicken. Can I help you? You know, I'll take a, a number one with uh, tomatoes, you know, a hamburger with tomatoes, if you will. Pull through the second window, whatever. The robot is making your sandwich, right? It's in there, zzz, 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 you know, it's doing all this little, this thing behind the scenes. But what happens though is number one, you got to have somebody to do maintenance for the machines. Number two, got to stop and think about what if this machine that is actually physically touching your food that yeah i mean unless you put a glove on it which would be kind of funny if you think about it you know a little glove on a robot it might happen (laughs) if (laughs) i'd love to see the day that would happen that'd be kind of interesting but then you have this point where you got to remember it's 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 a robot it's not a human so they have mechanics that have to be lubricated with oils like hydraulic Hydraulic fluid, but you know, it's all hydraulics, you know, and for those actions or it, or it won't work, you know, it'll be stiff as a board and it won't work. But what if you're making that sandwich in this, in this robotic autonomous robot, this AI has a leak or it makes a crack on, you know, just the, the metal or the hose or seal starts to go. And now you're talking about this oil or hydraulic fluid that is now dripping on your food. Now that's a horrible thought or horrible scenario or synopsis, but that's something you got to consider too. You know, I mean, would you want Joe Schmo's chicken with extra oil on your food or hydraulic fluids? Cause I certainly would. But, to me, you know, that sounds like a lawsuit that's going to cost more than paying an employee and, than a robot. And that's a great point because that's that was the it, the loop around exactly. It's like now you think about that, the technology of where people are like, oh, this you know, I can't wait for this. It's be so much easier. It will not be easier. It will no, actually it be. Won't. It could potentially be more harmful. More harmful than good, in a sense. It'll be cheaper for you know the the budget for the the owners of these said companies. But at the same time, you have a higher incidence where it could, you know, drip fluid on it or whatever like that. That could kill somebody. Of course, you know, things happen in the industry, regardless of what it is. You know, you can find chopped up pieces of plastic in your food, you know, right now as it sits. But, but I think though, as time progresses, like these robots and stuff that are coming in, it's just, it's going to be bad. I mean, oh, yeah. I you, mean, even humans make mistakes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we are not perfect. But they're not, they're not something that can be 
a lethal mistake. Right, right. Unless they threw a knife or a razor or something in foot, but exactly. I mean, it I could mean, be. It's been done before, but right, right. not often. And it could when be it, about anything, too, not just exactly. fast food, but in general, you know? And, and I don't know. And, and then you think about the robots taking over like that because they always say, you know, they, well, we've seen movies where robots come to life and, you know, I robot, I'll be back. You know, you got Terminator. these, <laughs> these scary thoughts because the computer is programmed by human, but it gets to the point where the programming itself now is the robot itself. It's programming itself. Exactly. And it's a scary thought. You think about it. People always want that constant 5G, 6G networking. They want, you know, they want the best. And, and mm-hmm. th- these people the today. The biggest and the best. And it's, it's scary. Nature. It, it is. And that's how we develop and evolve. You know, we went to start from the Bronze Age to the Industrial Revolution. Mm-hmm. To VHS beta. <laughs> to CD players. To boom boxes. Now we have little... You know, the, the MP3, remember the MP3 players as well, too. Oh, I remember getting my first MP3 player. See, I do, too. I do remember. I, I was going for jogs. That's when I was a little bit more in shape. But I would go <laughs> for my jogs and stuff like this, and I would have my my little player up here, and I would just listen to it and listen to the music that I enjoyed, you know? And, and it was super fun, super cool. And then technology killed it, you know? You had those pirated... Uh, uh, F- the pirated uh, websites and stuff that where you could download music. I could download a whole CD of music for free. I didn't have to go to the shop. I didn't have to go to a place, a music store to buy the latest album. I could just buy it re- or get it for free right here. Just type in blah, blah, blah. There's, you know, Joe Schmo sings the blues and I'm like, Oh, there we go. You know, like I got that for free. I didn't have to pay that publisher. Nothing. They got into a lot of trouble. Those yeah. kind of places. But there's a thing for technology, though. But uh, again, for autonomous stuff, no. As far as like getting us to different parts of the 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 universe, maybe. Because if you think if we didn't have technology like we do today, which is bringing up another point of mine, the very first time we we went to the moon, supposedly, I I still am on. I'm still by. I'm still like fifty fifty. We went to the moon, and I'll tell you why in a second. I- you think about it though, if you have a calculator that is just, you know, in your house, you have a calculator roaming around near you or in a drawer or whatever, mm-hmm. the power, the processing power of that calculator, the power of that calculator got us to the moon. Think about that. The very first space shuttle or first launching of, of space ships to the moon had the technology equivalent to the calculator. That's pretty messed up. Now think about it. The The last launch was what? In the 60s or whatever it was when we physically mm-hmm. touched the surface of the moon. Here's my question to you, Fufu. Technology has doubled, tripled, quadrupled, even more so 10 times, 20 times, 50,000 times better oh, yeah. than the technology we have. Which is interesting because... Why haven't we been back to the moon? Okay, see, me, honestly, I was actually just talking about this with my husband and my father-in-law last Mm -hmm. night. It's crazy that you brought it up. Because when it comes to that, it could be, one, it would have been cheaper to, you know, it probably would have been either I forget how they worded it last night, but mm-hmm. to fake the moon landing versus physically go to versus the moon. actually going, you know. <clears throat> right. You and, have to compare costs there. And that's true too, but if you if you're in like in California, and if you've ever been to Cali, or if you've ever been to, on a sound stage, like I, I've been on a sound stage, they're massive. Mm-hmm. You think about like the Pirates of the Caribbean, or the Caribbean, whatever you want to call it. 
they had those huge, I'm talking huge sound, you know, studios and they're massive. And yeah. there's, there's some that are as big as a studio, like a, a news studio. And they're as massive as a football stadium or bigger. So if I were to do that, if I were to say, okay, I want to outbeat the Soviet Union when it comes to this space race, they did kind of beat us up in space to begin with Sputnik and a lab, but, and I think they might've beat us too with their technology just to get to space in general. But if I wanted to say, ha ha, I got you, went over you, I would say, okay, do make, continue making the space shuttle, continue making all this stuff, blah, 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 but let's do this. Let's pretend that we went there. We can actually go into a studio, a sound stage. We can go there. We could actually mock the moon because we've, we've gotten pictures of the moon. We've got. Yeah, we, we know what it looks like. Right. It's just like with Mars, like today they're talking about Mars stuff. Okay. Well, if I go to the Arizona deserts or even to the Utah, look at the surroundings. Look at the outline area, the mountains and the desert line, how it works. It looks just like Mars. I could literally uh -huh. fake it if I really wanted to. But my point with the moon thing is, is, is we have all this technology now that we didn't have even, even back in the eighties, we had more technology than we did in the sixties. So why, why in the hell didn't we go back to the moon? We, we only touched base there like two or three times, two times. I think, you know, Armstrong and them touched their feet firmly planted on the planet, supposedly. But why haven't we gone back? Is there something that they know that they find alien technology? Did they, they see we, that's the big point of what we were talking about last night mm -hmm. is we we've been to the moon. Right. What was it that keeps us from going back? Right. There has been there has been satellite pictures of what looks like bunkers mm -hmm. and a tower with a satellite pointed straight at the earth. Yeah. There's been those kind of images. And, and, and that's, what is yeah. that is living there that is preventing us from going back. I think if it's a, if it's an alien race, did if we actually went to the moon, did they threaten us? If we ever went back, right. then it would start a terrestrial war. See, and I think that's why they moved on to Mars. I, I look at it like this too. I think if we're going to get, I think you're, you're right. But here's the thing. I think they took satellite pictures. I think we, we, we actually did do, I don't think physically humans have touched foot on the moon myself. It's just my opinion. You know, other people can say, yes, they did. You know, that's fine. That's great. But my thing Whatever is, and, believe it. and what you said is perfect is they, maybe they found, they always say it's on the back end of the moon, the dark side of the moon. Oh yeah. Not to be like Pink Floyd and stuff. The Pink dark Floyd. side. Of, yeah. Such a great, great album, but it's, it, they say that there are supposedly there's alien technology or alien bases on the backside of the moon, which I think is kind of, you know, whatever, but you said it perfectly. What if they'd actually did indeed find something if via satellite or maybe a message via dee -dee 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 -dee, you know, like a, a, a signal that they had translated into uh -huh. because they had the technology from 1947 Roswell, when the UFO crashed to the ground over in Roswell, New Mexico, maybe they got technology where they can actually read messages or interpret some signals, just throwing it out there. But again, that's why we haven't stepped foot on it. And because now we are going to Mars because there's more technology out there. There's always the face of Mars. I'm like, you know, cause I'm a big alien believer, but I, I mean, I've seen questionable things in real life, but I don't know. The face looks to be a face of the of an alien, but then again, it could be just the way the the satellite was flying over that particular mm -hmm. rock formation, the angle of the sun. You know, they have almost the exact same. If you think about it, the Mars is almost extremely the same size of Earth. 
It has the almost the exact same rotation speed as Earth. The day, the night ratio is almost the identical to ours, which is exactly. even creepier. And and one last little bit for me is that I think we started off on Venus. Now this is gonna throw you're like, what? Well, think about it. Venus is Again, just like the size of the Earth, it's about the same size and stuff. It's closer mm-hmm. to the sun, more, you know, it gets more heat, more radiation, et cetera, et cetera. But I think something happened with our technology, and this is where it gets interesting, Fufu. I think we, this is why we're jumping planets, okay? We, we screwed up. We, we caused the, the, the Venus to just be the hell it is now. If of all planets, except for the sun itself, it is extremely hot, is extremely greenhouse affected. It's even hotter than Mercury. Mercury is the closest to the sun. Yeah. Venus is just baking itself. It's just killing itself with over and over and over with the heat because it, the clouds cannot, the, it's getting hit to the ground, but it cannot bounce off the surface. You know, it can't uh-huh. do That's what we're so afraid of greenhouse. Look what's happening to the earth right now. Is In a sense, we are now getting... Exactly where the earth is starting to, the temperatures are starting to go up. And now we're looking, okay, future lives of, of humans have to continue living on. Let's bounce and find technology on this one. We'll start off on the grounds of, you know, we'll start in baby steps. We'll go to Mars now and start developing and getting people and humans on Mars to culture, to get their, you know, to cultivate things, to, to, to make life there. And then because earth is screwed, you know, that's my thought. I don't know. I could be, I could be way off, but it was just always my theory that we're just hopping onto different planets because as human beings, we're like, oops, we f this place up. Now we got to go to earth. This, this big marble that has an ocean, which is exactly what Venus had at one time and exactly what Mars had at one time. Mars has no atmosphere. It's completely gone. Kaput. Goodbye. Yeah, if you put plants on there that actually absorb the carbon dioxide, I think eventually if you put enough trees or enough planted uh, plants on the planet that can actually tolerate the heat and temperature differences, because it's huge spectrum mm-hmm. of temperature differences. At night, it's freezing cold. During the day, it gets really warm. Again, there's no atmosphere. But if you can find or even mutate a plant that can absorb carbon dioxide like they do, that's what they do. They produce oxygen in return. You now have a, a perfect environment where this plant can thrive, multiply, eventually, don't know how long it would take, but way beyond our lifetimes, it eventually will start building an atmosphere of oxygen to the levels where it will start building a building block or a cushion of O2 oxygen, where okay. now this planet, Mars, again, is thriving because it has a uh, an oxygen and, and it has everything because it's been oxygen, uh, oxygenated, if that's even a word, by these plants. If we took all the trees out right now in our, our world, if we cut them all down, we'd be kind of screwed. Uh, really. I, I mean, mean, that's the way we're heading. We're, we're heading there anyway. now. Exactly. And you're thinking 20, 20, 80, you know, 2080, 2090, 2100, when we get to those points, are we already on Mars? Are we already starting to develop trees and plants and animal species and stuff like this. Are we, cause it's going to get to that point. That's what you need. That's all you need is a plant that can, can officially withstand the temperatures. I mean, if they could replicate a damn goat, right. If they could gene split a goat and make it into a genetically altered goat, like they did years ago, why can't they genetically make a plant that has more tolerance to heat and weather environments, plant those onto a Mars or a planet, let it develop an oxygen enriched environment to where the point where humans can actually breathe. Once you do that, you'll have the hydrogens will start kicking in. You'll have some nitrogen, obviously, because that's what the plants are going to live off of as well as your carbon dioxide. Eventually that all that is just going to become this beautiful bulb known as a, another earth or a planet where you and I and whoever can breathe on. It's that simple, but it's scary. It's a scary thought, you know, considering that I feel we haven't been to Mars or moon, but you know, that's just it. Yeah. I mean, I, I get 
what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I agree. You know, the planet hopping theory is a really good theory. It is. But then again, you also have to look back at Earth's history. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We've had dinosaurs that have been killed off by meteors. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Ice Age. Yeah. Valid point. That, that shows that, you know, no matter what, Mother Nature is going to find a way to make it right again. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It always if heals for, itself. If for some reason it it doesn't heal itself, then yes, they'll probably like if if things don't start getting better with the greenhouse gases and the um the ozone layer getting thinner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's why they're trying to go and see about sustain sustainable life exactly exactly so that way there is a backup plan I e exactly mean, and that's where i feel like now it's, see the it's all trial and error at this point in time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's my theory too it's like okay alien technology maybe has taught us to see and that's where like blindy and i example we kind of clash when it comes to the belief of technology by aliens and stuff you think about all the the pyramids we're talking oh god yes we're talking thousands of years bc before christ as it's oh. called right so if you were to go today to say egypt which i would love to go i would love to see this stuff mm -hmm. it would be awesome and amazing you know but to think about to see all this stuff the technology and and how each individual chunk of the pyramid the individual stones if you will not only do they weigh a ton or multiple tons mm -hmm. but if you were to if you were to study them closely because scientists and archaeologists are just their jaws hit the floor like wildy coyote they are the the way they are put together side by side is so universal so perfect around the edges it's only off by like a sixteen thousandth of an inch or whatever it is so in other words, for humans to do that without using technology we have today, they don't they didn't have any of the stuff we have today. They didn't have any kind of electronic stuff that would guide you into, you know, this angle off by this degree. Yeah. They solely relied on eyes. Maybe they had primitive technology, we don't know. But how in the hell can you make something as massive as, you know, 10, 12 stories tall, a pyramid that has multiple rooms, has booby traps? Has and ventilation. It has ventilation. And on top of it, you bury your loved ones of the kings and queens and their families in here with a trove of treasure. How in the hell, without human knowledge of, of basic building, can you build something that good, that precise, without alien technology or some kind of technology that was given to you? Now think about that. And think about the 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 Aztecs the as the the you know all the way out in, in into Mexico if you go there if you look at that kind of culture and stuff that are thousands of miles away from Egypt how in the hell do they know how to build pyramids think about that the Aztecs they had pyramids all over the place Mexico is just filled oh god yes with pyramids and and stuff that is very similar to what you've seen you know in the valley of of the um of the gods or God, I forgot how they call it in Egypt, but the, the area where the pyramids are over there. Technology, man, I, I'm thinking, and I'm throwing it out there, foo foo right now. I'm thinking we may have been visited, not just in today's world, but in other times, I think we've had some kind of a technology where a being higher than us, who is mentally capable of snap fingers. Oh, I can do this for you. The technology in exchange for whatever it is, I think aliens did kind of give us that technology that we have today. Think about it. And, and see, on that on that note, mm -hmm. in the Bible, it, it, there's a passage, and <clears throat> I'm only bringing this up for a split second. It talks about a chariot of fire coming down from the sky. 
Okay. If you think about the time when that was written, what they didn't have terms like airplane, UFO, this or that. What did they use to get around? They used chariots. Chariots. Yep. Mm-hmm. They didn't have words like spotlight or you know stuff you would see on an aircraft what did they have they had fire right they had torches Mm -hmm. chariot of fire could have very well meant an unidentified flying object right because it's coming from the sky right right and all the hieroglyph that you've seen some of those things that are etched on mountains or etched on the walls of caves they Uh there's there's some that and I'm sure if you did a uh, web search, you would find them on your own. But if you look at them, it looks to be an alien form that has a has a helmet, a space suit in general, and it looks something not of this world. Now they they primitive people were known to for hierarchies or higher people in their tribes and stuff. They would you know etch out their kings and priests and you know the the princesses etc we get that that's what they the Cairo the pharaohs in egypt did it all the time right they would mark and the and the stuff but if you look at some of these great these these old i'm talking primitive etchings on stones and caves or mountains and stuff like this they look more alien they have they look like again they look like they're wearing a space suit helmet that you would find today that we would carry uh-huh. they look like they have an outline around their body That looks to be of a space kind of a suit. So why would some primitive, primitive technology or primitive culture of anywhere in the world globally that etched this out? Why would they etch that out if there wasn't, if they didn't see this, you know, the the sun, of course, you know, the ray, the God of sun, the Helios, if you will, they would do things like that. They thought those are gods. So why in the heck would they have these primitive etchings of a of a creature of a being if they didn't see it or if it didn't happen or even a spaceship looking thing i mean technology i i mean why would they lie back in those days you know exactly what did they have to gain from it exactly it's like um it's like what would be why would they lie about something like that if because and number one, for you to sit there and hammer this out on a on a stone would hmm. take a long time, and you wouldn't want to oh. waste your resources. Yeah, right? exactly. You would. I mean, would you sit there and and uh, unless you're Charles Dickens or something of the back then, where you just want to write a fictitious storyline, but you're gonna yeah. Etch- but then it, it, if it was something like that, it wouldn't be multiple different places in the world. Right. Exactly. It would only be confined to that one place and time. Right. So now it all stems back. Okay. You got the pyramids of Egypt. You got the pyramids of Mexico. You have all that area right there in that peninsula, you know, Venezuela and, and going further back up into uh, Panama. And you have all those areas in Mexico where the Aztecs were, they all have this culture and they all just disappeared. Look at Easter Island. I mean, holy shit. Have you seen Easter Island? All those those heads. They they didn't even find the 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 stones they had to find. Where did they get all the and they had to carve each one of those? They didn't have a, a machine that carved it out, you know, and said, okay, here's this head is exactly as this head. No, they didn't have that. And then like Stonehenge. Exactly. And England and England is notorious for its history, not only oh, for the, for the, you know, the Knights of, you know, the Templars and all that stuff. They were uh, protections of Kings and Queens, mm-hmm. but yeah, man, technology, even back then, think about it. It's Stonehenge is this, this calendar where you could see the sun through the thing. Who develops that? Who, who says, okay, I'm just going to develop this, you know? I think it's alien technology. I really do. Plato's and and um, um, Socrates, all these people, Da Vinci, all these people that are n- amazing brains. You know, Einstein. Were they are they subsidies of of aliens that were here or once here at one time? Kind of makes you wonder, you know. 
No, to me, it's just it fascinates me about space. We you know we haven't stepped foot on the on the. We have all this technology. We still haven't been anywhere around that. We know more about space than we do our own oceans, which is even funnier. But yes, that's, that's all, another that, big thing that I was talking about last night. Yeah, that's another thing too. Like we we know like seven percent of our oceans, which is crazy. But you think about it, if you could develop a space suit that can handle the pressure, the vacuum of space, why not develop a suit that can handle the exact same thing, but down in water pressure? It's, exactly. It's kind of the same thing, although water pressure is a little bit different than air pressure, but it has the same basis. And I'm not a scientist, but I would assume any kind of vacuum or any kind of pressure that is put on the body via pressure out in space where there's no air, no oxygen, it's a vacuum, it would be the same thing in the bottom of the ocean because if you're in a suit, and this is something that was scary back in the 50s and 40s and stuff, you know, you've seen those comm- or those old movies, right, where the, the big helmet on their heads that looks like a fishbowl and they're walking slowly with a big um, cord, oxygen cord that, you know, so the primitive space or the primitive water suits that they had, you know, diving suits, the bells, if you will, those suits are extremely dangerous because even if you had a crack in it and, and and Mythbusters proved it, they actually sent a, they had a, um, a fake body that was made of gel, uh, that bullet gel that they use and they put it down in pressures of water, the, the lower it went and it cracked the glass cracked on it. And immediately it sucked itself inward. It was just, it was like a, like a void, it would be like your body being sucked into a bottle of water. Yeah. I mean, instantly your whole brains, everything just gets sucked into it. So the whole body gets sucked into it. So I think that's why we don't do deep diving yet because of humans, because we haven't figured out the secret sauce, if you will. Of- and I, I get that, but it's also, it's 2021. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have technology. Oh yeah. We have those how do you think they found the Titanic? One of those little scuba mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. diver little camera things. Right, right. We have those. Mm-hmm. And they can you withstand don't have it. to risk a human life to go and explore the oceans. Right. We have the technology to explore the oceans. We have the technology to map the whole entire... But I know there's, there's, there's trenches, there's the uh, Pacific Trench... You know, the ring of fire, if you will, towards like uh-huh. uh, Japan, Alaska, you know, the whole area over there is called the ring of fire. And it's all because there's a five mile deep trench. But as you said, there, we have technology, we have the machinery that can do what humans can't. Why haven't exactly. we done it yet? Exactly. We know 7% of our ocean. That's crazy. Think 7%. about that. Our planet is like 75% water. Mm hmm. And we know 7% of that. That's like a 10th or 1% of the, and we have been to Pluto. Well, it used to be Pluto and known as a planet. We've been to Saturn. We've been to Jupiter. We've been, we've sent satellites as far as all seven, all nine planets have been photographed. Okay. All the planets in, in our, in the universe, immediate universe has been that. So mm-hmm. it makes you wonder like, why haven't we found anything in the oceans again? Now, is are there alien technology in the bottom of the oceans? Is there that alien? Was, that was the next thing I was going to say. We're constantly looking for UFOs in the sky. Right. But we don't know our own ocean. True. True. We don't know what goes on below the surface. We don't. We, we, we... know maybe... A mile down, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if that, maybe two. And the pressure just gets, I mean, you think the pressure does get intense. And I'm not going to lie to you. The further you go down, the more pressure is applied. So 60 pounds, I mean, it only takes, what is it? Six pounds per square inch of pressure to push on, to break a bone. So in human technology, that's not very much. And, no, it's not. you know, you, where you live, you know, the, the, you have creatures that are prehistoric. That can chomp on you and break a bone like that because they have the strongest jaw pressure PSI of any creature of the world, which is scary. Well, but, you got to think about it. They've lived for 
oh, thousands yeah. of years. They had to adapt and they had get to. that pressure. And, and they had to, and that was the survival, you know, that survival. Mm -hmm. And everything. Survival of the fittest. And, and they say everything came from the oceans. We were the first, you know, we came out of the ocean. We were all ocean creatures, if you will, single cell amoebas that evolved, 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 evolved. Now, I don't know about dinosaurs evolving like that because that would, but it's amazing how dinosaurs and stuff like that. Was there technology that did that? You know, was the, the asteroids a oopsie by aliens? Was it aliens that were actually invading the world instead of the, because we can only think about it um, in what is it? New Mexico. I'm sorry, not New Mexico, the um, Gulf of Mexico towards where that little inlet is down below in Mexico. And it starts going towards Panama mm -hmm. and all that stuff. That's where they say, quote, the crater or the, 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 the meteor that done in the dinosaurs is what killed the dinosaurs. Was that that explosion of that particular meteor that hit the earth now it was a massive one if you've ever seen the one over in arizona that crater that's like five is it two miles or five miles wide that would scare the bejesus out of me if i saw something that massive coming down from the earth but the, the that particular one they say is the one that did in the uh creatures because it produced and the the shock wave across the world but also too it caused the the cloud the gases and stuff like that, the, the volcanic ash and stuff or from the explosion to choke them out. That's what killed them. Right. But I don't know about that, but to think about if we came out from the water and scorpions were one of the very first creatures, they say that came out of the ocean and were on the land. But what, what caused us to start from the water? All the water we got is from space. It, it was all meteors hitting the earth. They say, because if you think a meteor or a comet, I should say, excuse me, a comet is a ball of ice. It's a, it's a big, dirty snowball is what it is. And it's, uh -huh. you know, hitting across the, you know, the, it's going, there's a huge belt of it way outside our universe, not too, too far, but it's out there and they just go around in this humongous out, you know, it goes all the way from the. Uh, the sun and back and it goes uh, back all the way out. It's what like, um, I can't think of the name of that. Com Haley's comet. Once every 76 years, it shows up, you know, and it pops around and it takes that long for it to do that big circle. But uh -huh. you think about these snowballs of dirty comets that hit the earth. They say that that's what gave us the oceans. So I guess in a sense, again, we are alien because we came from the different somewhere out there in the, in the universe as an alien fell down to earth and just said, Hey, let's just fill this up with water. You know, it took, I'm sure that took billions of years to do because the earth didn't cool down for the longest time, just as the moon broke off and collided and it took off that chunk. And that's what the moon developed, which is even yeah. weirder. But you know, um, mm. Mm. I think that we're looking in the wrong place for aliens. So right. I think we should look within our own planet. Deep in, yeah. I, and they say shift, shift, shapers, sh shape, blah, 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 shape, shape shifters. shifters. They say are here. And I don't know about that, but. I don't know about that either, but I've seen some, some videos and stuff where it, and of course it could all be doctored, could all be fake. I'm not saying you have to believe this because it, you saw it on the internet. No. Right, right, right. I've seen things that are unexplained, like what look like some kind of spaceship. Instead of going up, it went out to the middle of, like, off of one of the continents and go into the ocean. Right. That's, again, it, it might not be real, but it makes me think, what, what are we doing? It, we're it, looking in the vast emptiness of space, but we're not looking in the problem. in our own. Right. It's, it's, is domain. it, 
Is it underneath our noses? Is it underneath our feet? I mean, it's a possibility and we just don't know it, but maybe the government does. The government, you know, people have said, you know, has covered up stuff and, you know, that's, I mean, they were, they were talking about how did they, they worded. They said that the, this year the government was going, is announcing that they do believe in aliens you know, it's like, that's a big step. You know, you think about that, the government who's many, many years covered, uh, look at, look at like Roswell. They, they covered that immediately. They basically, yeah. now, I don't know if it's true or not, but people had said, you know, the interviews and stuff, they had said that when that happened over there, they were threatened. The family members were threatened. If you said anything about this, your family either will die or will take your family away and you'll never see them again. Mm-hmm. Men in black. That's what they called them. Men in black. They were in suits. They came, they rolled up in unmarked vehicles. They didn't have license plates. They didn't have nothing that said that this vehicle is a Cadillac or whatever. It didn't have no markings on it. Period. Just like, kind of like how, if you, you know how it is now over there at uh, uh area 51. I mean, is is that you know they take off from Las Vegas the the the, ship, the airlines that take employees the employees had to be flown to Area Fifty One mm-hmm. they're yeah. in unmarked planes the only distinction I think is they have red a, a red thin line around the ship the the I keep saying ship the airline there's no a, a navigation or or aviation numbers because if you look at like Air, you know, American Airlines flight 3240. Yeah, there's no flights. There's no numbers that that are um, serial labels on like they are on on your typical uh, airlines. You know, if I if I see an airplane sitting at the runway right there, it has numbers on the side of it, on the wing or on the back tail part that identifies Uh that one, you know, flight, you know, 3243 Delta 638 or whatever it is. So it identifies it. It's, it's kind of like a VIN number for your vehicle. Uh-huh. Those particular airplanes that fly to and fro from Area 51 do not have no markings on them. They're not even covered under the so-called dispatch or what are they, the control towers. They have yeah. their own separate control tower, their separate frequency, yet they still fly out from Las Vegas airport. That's kind of crazy. Why are they hiding? What are they hiding over there? Makes you kind of wonder. No one will ever know. We will never know. I've known people that, like my friends who are across the ocean, who have said, "Hey, Cactus, if I ever come visit you, you and I have to go over there to Area Fifty One or go no. over that." Area. I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> it, I'm I mean, sorry. I enjoy living. There are signs that physically say that they can legally kill you if you cross those lines. On site. Yep. Yes, they they don't have to. They don't have to tell you why. They could just Even, do it. Even if you just put your toe across under the fence, yeah, yeah, you are on that property, and they legally have the right to shoot you. Now, the damning thing, even further, is is even before you get to that line, they already know you're there. Oh they, yeah, they have cameras everywhere that we, the technology we don't have. Not so, only cameras, but they have pressure plates. Yes, and stuff. That you will never see, but yes. they, if you step on them, they'll know. So it all brings back down to this robotics, the AI and stuff. Where do we find all this technology? It makes you really wonder. It scratch your head. Like, where did this come from? This technology we have today is so advanced so quickly. There has to be something from another. Behind. Right. I mean. Like you said, I think it, you touched base perfectly. I think we do have to travel down. It, there's something below us. Uh, it could be Loch Ness for all we know. I mean, what the hell was Loch Ness Monster? Why did somebody report that they saw that? Why would they hoax something like that? What would be the personal gain? Fame and fortune? Yeah, that's cool. But you think it would be local. But when multiple people see something that happens multiple times, just like, you know, you've seen questionable stuff. I've seen questionable things. 
thousands and thousands of reports every year of alien to, of something being seen a UFO, which strictly means unidentified flying object, something that is not normal seeing here on Earth, like a jet or a helicopter or it kind of makes you wonder that, you know, there's, there's a lot of things we don't know. If you live near the ocean, a lot of people say they see stuff there too. Like you said, you know, you've seen videos and viral videos of things. I I think, I think you hit it on the head. I really do. I think that is something that we should look into as time progresses. It's, it's definitely a topic we can continue to revisit over Absolutely. and over because that is a topic that, will never die it will never die and it, it's so interesting but yet scary at the same time with autonomous vehicles to the the things that we have now that are in the near future i mean just think of technology the computers and and movies the cgis and all that stuff just um, it, it, it's amazing it's insane is what it is it's, it's absolutely insane it's intriguing as well as terrifying it is it is all right let's go to a commercial and then we'll go back on our, our third and final topic of the day um and we'll get back into talking into that because i'm kind of interested in seeing what you think about some of the latest things that's been happening here on twitch as well too there's a lot of it <laughs> here's a lot of stuff absolutely <laughs> we'll catch you after the break Okie dokie, we are back. Third hour, final hour of the day. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so there's a lot going on with the channels. A lot of things going on today. And this past week, about this and that in regards to what is formal versus informal versus lewd versus against tos mm -hmm. now i'm sure you've probably heard about this or read about this stuff that's been happening there have been many of reports and many um people complaining about some of the sections the categories here on twitch now i can understand that twitch is justin.tv started way back i don't know it was 10 years ago maybe 10 11 years ago it started off as a basically a website where the the founder who would do on a daily basis of a, a log a vlog of his life and you would watch it so back justin.tv days were just strictly playing games but other things too live stuff this excuse me, this and that where you would go and you could watch this person talk about this, you know, so it's kind of basically like a baby form of what today is fast uh -huh. forward into time when Twitch developed it. Well, from justin.tv and then turned into twitch.tv where it was now just about video games, maybe a couple of, categories here and there but mostly it was just as it's even states today on their website it was just a gaming site now if you see it's the world's leading live streaming platform for gamers and things we love so that's their tag their model that's what they based it on but now again it is even more more twisted around where people now are getting banned for these activities. Now people are saying, okay, this person who is a partnered streamer or streamers who are partners did this X amount of time doing lewd behavior that could be on the border of TOS. Now, yeah. I don't know about you, but if I'm looking at say at a person who is wiggling their hind end on the camera or making lewd gestures of innuendos that you can basically as an adult put two and two together on yeah and get away with it versus say a person who is a smaller developer a small platform uh, a, 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 a streamer a creator uh -huh. of content 
could do, they would get immediately either banned indefinitely or at least banned for a set amount of time or a quick suspension of time. Uh So what makes it better for them versus us as in a, us as in the majority of people versus the majority of the smaller content creators, right? Partnered non-partnered content creators. Now I see the thing I've read about too is, is, there's a lot of creators now who are struggling with like sexually suggestive streams or, or people like say, for example, like there are a lot of the ones where the women or the lady streamers too, in fact, who were banned, maybe it's a temporary ban. Maybe it's not, I'm not sure, but they now, because they do it, the mindset of some people, some of the viewers from either that particular community or communities of just in general, because uh-huh. people like to follow suit, you know, people are kind of like lemmings, you know, they'll go one way or the other in a line together. They suggest or think that women in particular, because I just bring this up because that was the uh-huh. two that got hit with these suspensions. There was a male yeah. one too, but we'll just solely focus on the two ladies at the moment but that was also a temporary it was temporary so it was temporary on the male streamers part gotcha if okay so the thing is is if you are a lady streamer who just does your normal things there are people who are, have these mindsets who are going to assume that you would have to follow suit because you, as that person, saw this other content creator doing the same things. So now you are considered bad if you don't do what they were doing. So in other words, they would assume that you have to do the exact same thing. So they, they expect you, even though you, you, you know, not you in general, but as in a whole, as a lady streamer, should do the same kind of lewd acts or aggressively ride these blow up pool things or whatever they are, the, the, the things pretty much. If you don't follow suit, you're, you're you're trash, not one of those. Yeah. You're, you're, you're you're, worth watching. Exactly. And, 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 I swear to God, Fu, that's total bullshit. I'm sorry. It really is. It's total Especially bullshit. Especially, like, okay, coming from a female streamer's perspective, I'm not going to shake my ass on camera for money. You shouldn't have to. That's, that's what OnlyFans is for. I mean, the, okay, there's people, I can, I could see, it, it, mm-hmm. as the word, as the word goes, I guess, you know, if you have it, shake what your you mom gave want it. it. Yeah, stuff like that. I get that, okay? But there is a line. Right. That you should not have to cross. Granted, yes, body positivity. You feel comfortable in your skin. That's awesome. That's good. That's great. That does not mean you have to go on a streaming platform. That was originally meant for games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And sit there practically naked or even just like a big, big thing. Tit streamers, as they're called. I just don't understand why. Maybe because I'm not, you know, I'm not one or I'm not, uh, I as feminine as I am in, in life in general, but I don't understand where all of a sudden this point came across where I'm a female streamer and I have to do this. If I don't do this, nobody will acknowledge me as a human being. I have to sell myself so short, so small that I have to do these, these acts just to get attention, just to get money. I can. Okay. I'm for people making money. Absolutely. And there are models there. There are, you know, um, there's, there's people who are in the sex industry. I get that. That's great. But you said it. I mean, this is a, this was a, a, a platform 
that was solely based, even as today it still says video live streaming service that vid focuses on video game live streaming. Exactly. Esports, competitions. I mean, that was the bread and butter of, of Twitch. Now Twitch has gone to this different angles and stuff where they have said, okay, we need to evolve, which I get. I love evolve. I love changing variety. I'm a variety streamer. I don't like just saying, okay, I'll just have the same burger every day. No tomato. Okay, tomorrow, huh? Same burger, no tomato. I don't like just being in a rut. Exactly. If you can e re evolve your channel, if you can do something different, like today makes a milestone for you and I both. Mm -hmm. We've came out of our cardboard boxes. Well, me in particular, because I live in one. We have come out of our shell and did something different. I get that. And I'm all for that. But there comes a point where you are aggressively hitting that gray area where you are just testing to see what you can do before you yeah. you get banned or oh yeah you feel that you won't get banned but because you're doing x amount of, of viewers or or the concurrent viewership the the analytics of your channel is through the roof i understand mm -hmm. that strike the iron while the iron is hot i understand it completely but wh where did all of a sudden did it get to the point where people are like okay well if i do this because you couldn't, if, if you were to go back just three, four years ago, well, even when I started streaming, you couldn't be naked or excuse me, not naked, but shirt without a man could not be naked from the top to his waist. You couldn't wear a shirt. You had to wear a shirt. Mm -hmm. You couldn't show feet. You couldn't show ankles. You couldn't show anything obviously out of the G rated section, if you will, of women and men which still applies to this day, but you couldn't do any of that stuff. They were very strict about it. You couldn't even do sleep. You couldn't even do a sleep uh, stream where people actually are asleep. I, I don't understand that. Why, why would you film yourself sleeping? That's kind of, that's um, it, a little bit too out there. <laughs> why, why would somebody watch you s sleep too? It's kind of, kind of odd. I can see if like, if you're, having sleeping issues because that's what doctors do there's yeah i mean i can understand acts. like if you're having like sleep issues or like right sleep acne or whatever they call it but or, like a paranormal stream if you've had some paranormal stuff happening right at night right i can understand that absolutely uh but but it, it like again, you know, Twitch has evolved over the th over the years, which is great. But then you have these two top creators. I mean, you're talking; they are partnered streamers who are tagging or towing the line, and they are what you call um, people who are influencers. In other words, they they influence you to watch them, to listen to them if they're promoting this or doing that they're watching a game they're playing a game it's going to incite you influence you to play the game at the same time right yeah well you have these top streamers who are doing this stuff and you're making thousands a month why would you risk why would you risk that just to do that what, what where's that mindset at and now like for example the smaller creators that's the controversy. If a smaller streamer did the exact same thing, would he or she or they, him or her, or he and him and her, would they get in trouble indefinitely, instantly? Like if somebody reported that channel saying, hey, this person is doing this, would they get banned indefinitely? Or would they get a temp suspension? As you mentioned, they're getting a temp suspension for the male streamer, was it? He just got for a the temp. male streamer because it was out of his hands. It was that was a complete out of his hands situation. That's right. why he only got temporarily suspended. As for the females, I have no idea on what's going on with that. I just don't understand why if if you were if you are comfortable with your body, why do you have to sell yourself so hard? Okay. Exactly. I don't understand that. I mean, wow, that's loud. I'm sorry. That <laughs> I, is, didn't, I didn't expect that. Yeah, it, it's that's, starting to come down. 
that would be scary to live in that. I, I just don't understand though why you have to sell yourself so deeply to do it now. Okay. So now that happened. Okay. People were talking about it. it was, it was a big controversy. It was a big subject on Twitter. I followed this carefully on Twitter. People in particular, lady streamers and stuff were getting upset to the fact that they found it lewd and inexcusable for somebody to ride a um, inflatable tube that is shaped like a phallus. And at the same time, also a microphone that's an ASMR, uh, people who need ASMR therapy. That's awesome. There's a, there's, there's a time and place for it. But when you're lewd and when you're you're doing these these acts that are almost kind of graphic like that, and 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 you know you're doing it at the same time, and you're thinking, well, I'm not going to get in trouble for it because you know I do this, I know people from you know this company and all this stuff. See, that was controversy too. It's or, like or the partners who have been around for a long time, right? Right. They. I, okay, I completely get ASMR. I understand, you know, people that do ASMR, that's fine. Right. I don't have a problem with that. No, I absolutely don't have no problems with that at all. I mean, it, there are people who need that therapy to ease their minds. That's mm-hmm. fine. And I'm all for natural therapy. I'm all fine for it. Mm-hmm. But when you're sitting but when there... you're you're stooping down to a very low level... To get yourself out there and make sure you're seen. Right. That is crossing a line from therapy to almost greed. Right. It is. And and it's and it's it's you think about like you know you're doing it and you're just like haha i can i'm better than you i make you all this money so i can just it's it's kind of reminds me of a a snotty sibling in a sense yeah. you know it's like ha 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 you know you can't tell me what to do i make you money if you don't like this i can go to another platform and make you money and blah 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 exactly. but you got to stop and think about it though there's a difference okay the the platform is evolving great they just introduced the beach Category. And beaches. Now, why they twisted off, I guess they felt that the IRL section, just chatting section, should have been just either basically just chatting, you know, talking and 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 and, and stuff like this, which I get. I understand that, you know, if you're doing all this stuff or if you're going to the mall or if I'm shopping, whatever the case it is, it's just in real life. Not riding a damn inflatable, though. To me, that's just wrong. So I, I kind of get that. It needed its own category. But people... And see, the, the thing with the, the categories, that category that mm-hmm. they just introduced, what, last month? Right. Is not doing good at all. It isn't. Now, there's not any... Like, there's very little views on that. Right. Compared to the whole of Twitch. It had the views and it had the followage mm-hmm. when it was in the just chatting section. Right. Now, is that because people don't know that? It, well, obviously, they do know it exists. They 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 have to know it exists. I mean, if, Christ. if they're on Switch, right, and they go into the browse, they can see all of the categories. Right. They have to know that it is there. Right. But then again, it also hasn't stopped people from doing said it, hot tub and pool streams in the just chatting section. Right. Exactly. It has it has not stopped anybody from. I mean, if you stop and look at it, if, if I were to go into the just chatting section, OK, of Twitch, it's a hodgepodge of things. Now, Twi- that's another thing, too, on, on that kind of a topic. Twitch used to be where if you were, say, for example, I was playing, what if I was playing Lunch Lady? And if I wasn't in the category of said Lunch Lady, mm-hmm. and if somebody or multiple reports of saying, hey, this person is miscategorized, because if you look down below a channel, you can report the channel 
And there's one section of it that actually physically says, you know, that it says it's miscategorized, which yeah. is okay. That kind of makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. But if I were to go into the just section, or the just uh, chatting sections, a lot of times you'll see people either streaming marijuana stuff, oh, yeah. which that's, I, that's like a lot on pe- Twitch. People who are, are physically driving their vehicles and reading their chats, which I do not recommend you do at home, folks. Do not do that extremely dangerous you're putting my life in jeopardy and others around you in jeopardy in general it's just crazy some of the things that you see on it but see they they miss time and if you report these categories if you try to do you're trying to be the best you're like okay i don't want to be that kind of a person but i'm going to report this channel because they're miscategorized i get that sometimes you'll get like i've done it myself i've streamed for five years on this on Twitch. So I've made mistakes where I've not categorized myself. I've accidentally correctly. Right. Like I might forget after this show it ends at five o'clock. I might accidentally forget, oh, I'm still in the podcast section where I should be in the lunch lady section. So I'll correct yeah. myself. Or somebody in chat will say, Hey, I'm in, you know, this channel and stuff. But when it comes like I, to like I have done for you before. Exactly. And yeah. like I've had people do for me in my chats. I, I look and at that way instead of reporting us right. for a small simple mistake, we can fix it. And if we don't fix it, that's when it should be reported. The analytics, as you mentioned, are correct when it comes to the category of pools, hot tubs, and beaches. I was not doing as good as it was. Now, again, the other section, I mean, they're at right now thirteen thousand point uh, thirteen thousand four hundred plus right now as it sits 13.4k which is a lot don't get me wrong but But now the whole of twitch it is not no not at all now if you were like barely a a fraction of the whole of twitch now if you're if you look at the just chatting section now you have 595,000 viewers okay Mm -hmm. you have a half a million people that are in that section alone just chatting so was it a good idea to bring this beaches section into twitch in general now look what happens is you get two main uh, people who are partnered streamers now put themselves in hot water and officially got themselves either banned indefinite or just a suspension because they figured that they can do more ludicrous things or more things that you they can do as partners versus such as a smaller streamer or a community streamer in general or creator can do now is it fair if they just get a slap on a wrist is that fair to the majority of the the consumers or the people who actually stream on a channel no i don't think it is They've been multiple, they've been, they have been temporarily suspended or banned, if you will, multiple, multiple, multiple times, but they still get slapped on the wrists. Why is that? Is it because of the money thing? Is it they say, okay, in the long run, this person can make me 40, 50, 60,000 a month minimum versus a smaller community, a creator that even if they're, if, if they're affiliated, if they get, Five, ten subs. Nah, eh, I mean, we get we get scratched and get rid of them. To me, that's not fair. It's not fair at all to me. I don't think I don't think I think everybody should be treated as equal. And that was the big fight on Twitter. And and right before the suspensions, before this the suspensions dropped, the wrecking ball, if you will, there was this big arguments right and left in Twitter. That was based aimly, it's aiming solely at Twitch. So when people, when Twitch, you know, tweeted out something, immediately underneath all that, people were tweeting about this and this and this and this. Why are you letting this happen? Why are you doing it in this section, this section, this section? So it must have gotten the attention of somebody because they were getting thousands of people who were arguing and saying, you know, this, this shouldn't be on your stream, this, this, and that, and everything. you get yourself lawsuits. That's another thing too. You got to think about foo-foo. There could be lawsuits from people doing this. 
you know, and, and people's rebuttal, well, you know, younger eyes can find more 18 plus sites out there on their phones versus this place is, I don't know why people are arguing about it. Why, you know, people really give a damn. You just move on. You don't watch it, you know, which is absolutely crazy. But it's just one of those things that happens. But what we can do. All right. Well, buddy, I appreciate your time. I know it's a little cut off a little bit shorter than norm, but I appreciate yeah, it. We, we have hail and lightning really bad. And okay. hail is not a good thing, especially in Florida. It's not a good thing at all. So I, I don't want to mess up my computer and all this. So we will pick this back up on Monday. Yes, I appreciate it. Yes, definitely on Monday. So I I enjoyed it. I really had a good time doing this. Absolutely. Absolutely. In the future, too, ladies and gentlemen, we will include people, uh, guest streamers as well, too. We'll give that information to everybody. Uh, we'll cut it a little bit short due to the inclement weather that Bunny Fufu is experiencing right now. I appreciate your time over there. We'll cut this off now for you.